cement is very important in the development of any country, no matter how big or how small it can be. Cuba is a rather small country, it's an island, but we are, uh, we are traditionally cement producers. So we have a built capacity of 4 million tons a year in the country. But in the, because of the recent economic reforms, there is a boom in, in demand for cement for the forthcoming years. And uh, of course, in that moment, very, with a very good timing, there's an LC3 uh, cement coming on, whereas with little investment or relatively little investment, you can increase the, the capacity of production of cement. Of course, it's very, uh, very much welcome in, in the context of Cuba. So it will contribute to, to further development of the country. I mean, in order to meet the, 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 the forecast demand for Cuba, we would have to build at least one more cement plant, which would probably take five years of time for, for erection and setting up the plant into operation. And also, it, it would be an investment of around $500 million. Whereas with this uh, LCC, we can increase with the existing capacity of clinker, we can increase the production of uh, about 56%. So it's like, like making a new cement plant without actually making it, only creating these calciners and, and everything, and using the existing capacity. In Cuba, I foresee that there's one big benefit coming up from, from the LC3. It is, uh, uh, it is durability. We have severe problems in our constructions because of corrosion. Corrosion is associated with the presence of chloride in the air. Being an island surrounded by the sea, we have a high uh, um, intensity of chloride in the island, and this cement has proven to be very much resistant, at least 10 times more resistant to, to chlorides than normal cement. So this is going to be one of the main uh, contributions of the cement. And of course, we're talking about uh, the, the possibility of not importing cement from other countries, but producing it locally. Uh, which was, of course will, will help us to meet the, 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 the growing demand of cement in the short term and of course it will be able to kind of uh, improve the cement, the Cuban cement industry and especially the, the local housing. So housing area is very important in Cuba. Well that's, that's a very important issue too because uh, there's a big discussion worldwide about the, the CO2 redu reductions. But normally they're, they're asking developing countries to reduce their, their, their CO2 emissions where they need to build infrastructure. Countries like Cuba, we, we have to develop our own infrastructure. And of course, if you want to develop your infrastructure, you have to use uh, materials like, like concrete, like steel, that are CO2 emitting. And uh, I mean, from that point of view, Re reducing the CO2 emissions uh, would mean uh, reducing the, the, the creation of the infrastructure. Whereas with uh, solutions like SC3, we can still uh, grow our infrastructure without increasing significantly the, the, the carbon emissions. So this is for me the main, the main thing. We can still grow but meet the international needs of, of reducing carbon emissions. So we can do very well with low-grade clay, which is normally in countries like India, this is an overburdened material. So this is a material that you tear us, you remove before you start really start mining. And this material, and there, there are huge amounts of this material, especially in, in, in tropical countries like uh, Cuba, but also in Africa, in Latin America, these materials are suitable for the produc production of LC3. From my point of view, this is a great advantage, so the abundance of, of, uh, of materials. But secondly, the, the production, as I said, is less energy intensive, so there are some, some savings, especially strategic savings in terms of energy. Energy costs are forecast to rise in the forthcoming year, so if you are introducing a technology that is less energy intensive, so you're, you're bound to have better results in the long term. Normally the trend is that, that uh, industrialized countries, they, they, they think they can take their, their ideas into developing countries and there's always failure because they, they do not take into account the context of developing countries. 
So if you want to, to, to introduce something developed in an industrial country like the LC3, you have to work, you have to, to, to team up with people in developing countries because they are the ones that can tailor that technology to their contest. And, and I think this is the great uh, potential of this project. We are working with people in Cuba, Latin America, India, China, uh, everywhere, Brazil. So, and we're, we're not, it's not uh, technology transfer in the sense that you're sending containers with machinery from Europe to be assembled there and set into operation. We're talking about knowledge. We're sending knowledge, to transferring knowledge to these countries. And, and this is basically what really counts. I mean, they can embrace that knowledge, assimilate that knowledge, and incorporate that in their own practices. For me, this is the great value of this. And uh, this is a great contribution of these uh, SDC programs. So, because we started, this is the third phase of the SDC uh, pro project. We started with a very simple project. It was evolving through, through the time. And you see we're now in the, in the verge of a really impressive result.